Hi, my name is Carmelita. Welcome to my channel. Um, here I talk about graduate school um, for specifically for counseling students and IO students or people who are interested in either of those fields or both. Um, so um, this topic is about tips for counseling students during the pandemic. Um, I don't know about your sites, but mine has gone telehealth completely. Well, yes, completely-ish. Like, there are still people who are seeing people in person, but that's only if the counselor and the client feel comfortable doing that. Um, I see everybody through telehealth right now, um, which for me wasn't a huge deal since my program, my counseling program, has always been an online program. So for me, nothing in that regard has changed. It's just that um, this was my first semester in practicum. I just finished my practicum semester. So I'm moving into my internship in May. Um, so this is my first semester in field work. And I started out on ground and had an office and things like that. And then um, in a matter of like a month or two, everything is completely um, through telehealth now. So, so here's some tips for you if you are like me and you're a student going through this um, and you're trying to figure out just different ways um, to help your clients and to help yourself and to keep calm. Um, so the first thing I say I would say is to make sure you have open communication with your site supervisor and your university supervisor. Um, make sure they know what's going on with your site. My site, my school was very, very good about about keeping open communication with us. Um, almost too good because they would email us like constantly. Um, and then we always have um, a, um, supervision once a week through my university. So that's also a time to be honest about what's going on at your site. Um, most, if not all, schools want you to succeed. So if you have felt that like you're able, you're not able to get as many hours right now as you were before, this is a perfect time to tell them that because they're not going to know that you're struggling if you don't tell them that you're struggling. They're just going to assume that everything is fine with you. And then before you know it, the semester will be over and you will not have finished the hours that you need. So um, everybody who, you know, is on your team, your supervisor, your university supervisor, and your site supervisor, um, they want you to succeed. So the best way that you can succeed with them is to be honest about what's going on. Um, be honest with your site supervisor. Tell them what you need. I was very honest with my site supervisor and telling him what I needed um, and like my concerns about not getting enough hours and my concerns about third-party billers billing for telehealth for students um, who are counselors or counseling students. Um, and he was able to get answers for me and help me through that whole process. But if I had just sat there worrying and not told him anything, then I might not get, I might not have clients right now that I can see through home. Um, my other tip is for you to make sure that um, you have a private room in your house for telehealth if you are moving into telehealth. Um, my room, this is that room that I use for counseling. Obviously, I don't use this computer for counseling. Um, I guess that's not obvious to you, you wouldn't know. But I don't use this computer for counseling because of the busy background of my desk over there with all that stuff. It would be so distracting. So I actually use that desk over there for counseling. Um, and only I can see all that stuff right there and it doesn't distract me because I'm used to it. I might distract a client though, so I never use this computer for counseling. Um, when I use that computer, I use my or that desk. I use my laptop, and in the background, you can see my door is closed, um, and it's just a plain background. Um, my walls are like cream color. You can see my walls, and then my door is white, so that's what they see. Um, and I think that that is helpful for some clients because they know then that I'm in a closed room, um, and that I'm the only one there. I think that if you're in an open room or a room where they can't see the door, then they're not going to know for sure who's listening and if there are anybody if there's anybody else around. So I just like to have the door closed in the background so that they see that visually can see that the door is closed. Although you don't have to have that. There's plenty of counselors that just have a plain wall in the background or something therapeutic, and that's fine too. Um, another thing that I do is I wear headphones in my ears if I'm not the only person in the house. Um, 
there's only me and my husband here, so we don't have other people living in our house. So most of the time he's at work when I'm doing my counseling sessions anyway. But if he does come home, or because I know his schedule, so I know if I should put my earbuds in before I start, start this session because he's going to come home at some point. Um, I do that because I don't want him to hear what the person is saying. Um, I don't think that he can because usually he's downstairs and I'm up here. But just in case, I just want to have the extra layer of protection for the client. Um, and he usually says he can't hear, well, he always says he can't hear anything that I say when um, I'm up here. But um, that's mostly why I do my sessions at a time where he's at work because, and then I know for sure that he can't hear because he's at work. So um, just having that extra layer of protection for them. You might also want to consider getting a white noise machine and putting it by your door to um, just to have that like extra security there. Um, another tip is to do a lot of research. It's very, especially if your clients are children, um, I find telehealth with adults extremely easy. Um, it's no different for me than seeing them face to face. Um, but that's probably because again, my online club, my um, program is online. So I was trained basically um, to work in an online setting because even though we're trained, you know, to do therapy with everybody and we also do in-person um, role plays and stuff, um, and we have, you know, field work, which is in-person, we still had, like, so many role plays online. And we get so used to doing, like, meetings through Zoom. We used to use blue jeans last year, now we use Zoom. And um, we just get so used to doing that that, for me, it was just kind of like an easy transition for working with adults through telehealth. Now, children is something that I was not prepared for at all because I have been a pre I was a pre-K teacher for five years, so I'm familiar with working with children. Um, I was not familiar with working with children through telehealth. That's something that you're not taught. So I actually do start my child and adolescent counseling cl class mid-summer. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I can learn some things about how to um, things to do with telehealth for that. But in the meantime, I've been researching articles um, that other counselors have written about telehealth with children. I've um, contacted uh, other counselors in my um, organization who work with children on a daily basis and who are currently doing telehealth with children. Um, and so I've got some tips that I can share with you that I've been using. Uh, there are many games that you can play with children through telehealth. Obviously, there's so many things that I miss about seeing them in person. One of the things that my kids used to always do when they came into my office was they would use the Mr. Potato Head. I got it from Kohl's, and it's this huge, giant um, potato head with a bunch of little potato heads inside. And I would ask them, how are you feeling today? Show me on the potato head. So then that gives them an opportunity to do expressive play and to not only talk about their feelings, but show me how they feel and explain how come they feel that way. Um, and that was just like a great door opener for all of my kids. And so I miss that so much because I don't have my Mr. Potato Head here with me. Even if I did, then I'm sitting here creating the potato head for them. That's not helping. I mean, it's helping, but it's not helping. And so um, what I did, what I've adapted to is I use Zoom and I share my whiteboard and I ask them how they're feeling and they can, if they don't feel like talking to me, which is um, actually occurring quite, not quite often, but a little bit more often than usual, I'm finding. It's just because we're not, you know, we're not able to engage in the same way that we used to um, with some of my kids. With other kids, it's just so easy to engage with them. With other ones, they're more closed off, and they, I used toys a lot to help open them up, and so it's very difficult through telehealth. So what I did was I share my screen with them, and then they are able to draw how they're feeling. And I found that this helps a lot with um, opening that door to talking about their feelings, how come they're feeling that way, and doing some problem solving with them as well. I think that the coronavirus is like affecting the kids too because they're sitting at home not being able to see their friends um, as often or at all for some of them, and um, they're 
they're struggling because they can't go out. I mean, they go outside, but it's not the same. Like, they can't go to the park like they used to. They can't go, you know, out with their parents and go out to eat or go bowling or anything like that. And so, um, you're, and then, and especially when it's like birthday season for some kids and they don't, and they know that they're not going to be able to celebrate their birthday in the way that they want to. So, you gotta, you have to be creative and you have to be understanding of like what's going on in their lives right now and kind of just adapt the way that you do things. Um, so they use my whiteboard to basically tell me how they're feeling, tell a story of their day, tell a story of their weekend, and then also to help them problem solve. So I, one of the things I use also is books. I find a book when I was a pre-K teacher and we didn't have a book. Um, that was part of the curriculum. We would just find it on YouTube. And um, I, the kids didn't like that as much as obviously me reading the book, but it's an alternative if you don't have the book. Um, so I would go on, I go on YouTube, I find the book, and then um, share it my screen, and then we talk about the book. And it's usually about a problem. So one book that we went over with some of my kids is What Do You Do With a Problem? And um, basically... I use that book to help them process how to solve their own problems. And so I bring that book out into different counseling sessions depending on what comes up. Um, and then I'll draw on my whiteboard. Um, I'm not talking about that whiteboard. I'm talking about my Zoom whiteboard. Um, I'll draw a stick figure of the kid and then I'll put a little problem cloud and then I'll write the problem in the cloud and then um, little raindrops are the solutions that they come up with to their problems. And I find that it helps so much. It's kind of like a CBT technique, um, but it helps them so much because they'll start the session being like, I don't know how to solve this problem. And then you end it with like, look at you, you solved so many, you have so many solutions to this problem. Remember when you said you didn't know how to solve this problem and now you figured it out yourself. Um, and so that's kind of like a positive reinforcement for them to actually sit down and think through their problems before acting, um, which is hard for everybody, not just kids. Um, <laughs> but it gives them some ownership of their own life and their own struggles to let them know that they can control some things in their lives. Um, so that's not one another technique that I use. My biggest, um, I guess my biggest advice for you is to also be um, be mindful of your own time because you are a student and you may be taking other classes right now too. Um, so also just keeping track of your hours and things like that. So have your planner. I use my I use a planner or paper planner um, to track like your homework assignments. When are you have university supervision? When do you have site supervision? And um, also just like being mindful of using those times to the best of your ability because right now is um, a time of such like uncertainty where you really, really, really need to depend on clinicians that are fully licensed and have experience and they are depending on you too because um, some of our supervisors are older and may not be used to telehealth. So you may find yourself in a position where you are used to telehealth because you were in an online program or just because you're, you know, you easily adapt to things. And so you can help people in your organization who are not adept to technology and you could teach them how to use Zoom or you could teach or you could share with them articles on telehealth and videos on telehealth. I found so many helpful videos from other counselors on YouTube and like these are fully li licensed children's counselors who have all of these ideas of what to do with children through telehealth and how to keep them engaged. Um, so also use Facebook groups. I, I joined a Facebook group um, and it's a really good resource for connecting with other counselors who are going through the same thing you're going through or who are more experienced than you are and have more feedback to give and also for you to just share your resources as well because this is a time where we really need to depend on each other for um, guidance. So I hope that helped you a little bit, um, if at all. <laughs> um, leave a comment or a question below. Thanks.